Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a deeper network device into your Wi-Fi system. If you haven't watched my previous video on the general setup and unboxing, the link is in the description. Make sure you go check that video out first. And this video is specifically dedicated to those who have all-in-one modem because this is my current Wi-Fi system, which I have an all-in-one modem slash Wi-Fi. It really took me a while to figure the best setting for for my router. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I do my settings and how I do my routing. I'll link some videos in the description below as well. I watched all those videos and they are really helpful. So maybe they can give you a hand too, just in case you follow exactly the settings I mentioned here and it's still not working for you because again, each one of our setting and setup is different, okay? So without further ado, let's get into it. So a few preparation you want to do is number one, you want to locate your current all in one modem and you want to be able to log in to it. So a lot of these modem, you're going to see a sticker on it and there is admin login to the dashboard as well as the IP address. Make sure you have access to that. And the second thing what I had to go buy and to make this work is a secondary router. So now it's up to you, right? If you want this router to be really good quality, I'll link Link a few in the description. I've tested about three of them and the best one I found is uh, basically a gaming router and it's working beautifully so far. The reason you want to buy a router is because we want to connect the deeper mini with this new router instead of overriding our all-in-one modem. If you do this setup, what's going to happen is that you're going to have a two different networks and you're going to have the options to switch them back and forth. In my daily life, my all-in-one works really well. There's no disconnection, none of that issue. So if anything happened or emergency, I can always switch back to my all in one. So my Wi Fi will work no matter what. Okay, the second router is really dedicated for deeper network. Some people will overwrite their current existing one. So that is one of the options you can do. But I just wanted to let you know that this setup, we're creating two different networks. Third item you probably need is probably an adapter. This could be a USB C to Ethernet adapter because we're going to reset the router or if your computer already has an ethernet cable port then you basically don't need any adapter i'm going to link the adapter in the description as well make sure you go there and check it out and grab the right one then followed by an ethernet cable you can get cat 7 or cat 8 i'll give you exactly the one that i purchased the reason we only need one ethernet cable is because deeper network comes with one cable you just need one extra ethernet cable so two ethernet cable in total. Now I'm going to show you exactly how I did my settings on both of my all-in-one modem as well as the secondary or the new Wi-Fi router. Step number one, you're going to log in to your current all-in-one modem. The IP address should be on your modem box. If you don't see that, I'm currently using Mac. The way I can have access to it is click on my Wi-Fi icon and click on Network Preferences. And now if I click on Advanced, and click on TCP slash IP. This is going to display to you your IPv4 address. You see the subnet mask as well as a router. So this router IP is what we need to grab. And you want to open a website browser and you want to type in this IP address. The username normally is admin and the password you're going to find it on the box. And once you log in, each one of our brand is different. The router provider is different. So we might have a different structure and layout. However, the basic terms should be straightforward and identical. I came to my network. There's one option that says LAN, L-A-N. So what you want to do is you want to kind of take a note on this LAN IP. This is really, really important because we want to set up the second Wi-Fi router that doesn't interfere with this one. It's really important. So you should be able to see a private IP address as 192.168.something. These two are the information we need for the second router. In the second 
second setting I came to underneath LEN, it says bridge. There's a technique you basically can Google it. It's called a bridge. Basically, we set two Wi-Fi routers and let them communicate each other. Really important part is that I didn't connect the full bridge. If I do a full bridge, what really happens here is that my current Wi-Fi modem will stop working and only passing the signal to the second router. So it's really important that I set it to LAN 1. That means only one of the Ethernet ports on this Wi-Fi router is going to be bridged to the second router. If you don't have this option, I would say maybe this is optional. I just happened to see this option and I checked on it and it worked really well for me. If you don't see this option on your setting, maybe just skip this part. The setup should be able to work. Now I'll come to Wi-Fi and I come to 2.4 gigahertz. One of the videos I watched, I will link it in the description. It says the one that doesn't interfere, it should be one, six or 11. So I pick number six. Basically we lock this 2.4 gigahertz into one channel. So it won't jump around and interfere with uh, the second router. Come to five gigahertz and I set this channel to 64, which is all the way at the bottom. The reason again to do this is to, we want to separate the channel. So they're not going to overlap with each other. You will see later that on the second router, we're going to a different channel. That's how we're able to not let them overlap each other. If you don't have this many, maybe just assign something and remember it because we're not going to assign the second router on the same setting. That's all I did in terms of my current all-in-one modem. My modem had to do a reboot. Just let you guys know that you might do a reboot and come back to this screen. Now what I did is I grabbed an Ethernet cable. I connected to my LAN 1 port on my current all-in-one modem. You can see in this photo that it's marked number 1, 2, and 3. I just simply connected this Ethernet cable to the LAN 1. And now what we want to do is that we're going to grab this second Wi-Fi router. If you have a used one laying around, you can use it. If you don't have it, you can buy one on Amazon or Craigslist. Fortunately, I found this gaming router on Craigslist for about $100. So this brand new one is actually $340 to $400 and I got it for $100. So if you go out and look for deals and there's definitely good Wi-Fi router that's out there and people are not using, definitely take that as your advantage. And now what we want to do is we want to grab this second Wi-Fi router. Obviously, you want to power this router. First thing we're going to do is you're going to see at the back of this router, there should be a small little pinhole. We're going to grab a small little needle and insert this needle into this small little hole and hold it for about 5 to 10 seconds. This should do a reset on this new Wi-Fi router. Now you want to grab another Ethernet cable with adapter. Depends on your machine. If your computer has an Ethernet port, you don't need adapter. But if you don't, you need a USB-C or USB 3.0 to Ethernet adapter. And now you want to connect this router to your computer with this cable. And also make sure your Wi-Fi is turned off. So we're not going to use Wi-Fi in this process. I'm a Mac user, so I click on my Wi-Fi, came to Network Preferences, and now you can see the Wi-Fi is red, it's turned off. However, the Ethernet is green. Once it connected, you should be able to see the Wi-Fi router IP address again. You can see here, this is 192.168.0.1. This is the default version for this exact brand. By the way, the brand I use on router is a TP-Link. If you want to do exact the same settings, maybe get a TP-Link will be a better choice choice for you. Grab this router IP address 192.168 and you want to come to a website browser and type that in the address field. Now you can see that it brought me to the first page which is set up an admin password. Once I set up my password, it lead me to the next page which is the setup page. What I really did here is instead of I doing this smart setup, what I did first is top right corner, there's something called a change mode. I clicked on it and I changed the router mode to AP mode. This AP stands for access point because we want to set this second router as an access point instead of another router. This is similar to the first one. If you don't have this exact setting, maybe skip this part. It might still work. The TP link had this option. I just went for it. I want to show you exactly how I did it. So if you don't have this option, skip it. It might still work for you. Once I click on OK, it's asking me if I want to reboot and just click on reboot. Now the router is doing a reboot and this takes anywhere from a minute to two 
two, once the Ethernet light is green connected, came to the same address 192.168.0.1. This is my password I set initially. I just need to punch in this password and click on login. In here you see, instead of many different steps, because we changed the mode, now I only have two steps to do. Let's go through the setting exactly. Smart Connect, I disable it. 2.4 Hertz, I enable it. And Network Name, which is also SSID, you can leave it as a default. And a Password, you can change it or leave it as default as well. In here, I clicked on Set Each Band Separately, so it will open up the 5G channel as well. So once I enable it, again, you can change your password. I set everything as default. And once I'm done with that, click on Save, and it's doing its connection test. Once the testing is done, I clicked on Finish, and it prompt me to the dashboard. So this is another different router you can see uh, by a different brand. Under internet, there is a LAN setting. You see, even though there are two different routers, separate companies, but they all have a similar terms and names, right? What we want to do is we don't want to set dynamic IP address here. Really important because we don't want this router to jump around with the IP address. What we want to do instead is we want to set a static IP address. Once you click on static IP, it should give you a default IP address or asking you to manually enter an IP address. You do not want to conflict this IP with our all-in-one router. My all-in-one is 192.168.1.something and this one is .0. .something. So you can see that it's not overlapping. So by watching a few YouTube videos, I quickly learned on the all-in-one modem, my last number is three digits, is 254. What I really did here is I bumped up the 254 to three. And the best way to do it is to add one digit. So if it's dot two, you want to go with a dot three. If it's dot three, you want to go with a dot four. So in here, what I did is I changed my IP address completely to 192.168.1.3. This is because we don't want to conflict with our first router IP as well as the IP range, right? This is opening a new range. Subnet mask field is 255.255.255.0. This number never changed. Default gateway is really important. You want to enter the IP address you grabbed earlier from the all-in-one modem and you want to fill in here because the default gateway, the access point is actually from the first all-in-one router or modem. And you want to fill in here and once you're done with that click on ok or confirm and it should direct you to the next login page remember we changed this lan ip address from dynamic to static once we modify this ip address this current one which is 192.168.0.1 will no longer work it's going to be routing to this new ip address you're filling just keep that in mind once you lose this connection you won't be able to log into this page unless you're typing this exact ip address okay Okay. The router should do a reboot and now just patiently wait it out for a few minutes. And you can see here in the address field, I typed in the new address, IP address, which is 192.168.1.3 instead. Once I type that in, I'm able to come back to the same dashboard. Once you're done with that, you want to go to the second setting underneath internet, which says DHCP server or DHCP. We do not want to turn this on. This option has to be off in order to make this work. Otherwise, it won't work. We are done with the internet setting, right? Make sure DHCP is off. And now come to wireless list and we're going to quickly assign the channel and we should be good to go. And in here, you can see the wireless setting. I have a smart connect disabled or unchecked and I have 2.4 Hertz enabled. Really important part is you can see if at the bottom of this 2.4 Hertz page, I have something called a channel. So instead of automatically assign channel and assign the channel 11 to it. Remember the first router, we set channel six. This new router, we set the channel to number 11. And the scroll all the way down, there's another channel field for 5 Hertz. In here, you can see I have a whole bunch of options. So specifically, I just set it to 157. So anything that's different than the first router. Again, the whole purpose of this is to not let them overlap each other. Okay, 157 is what I signed to. Once I'm done with that, click on save and click on OK. That's all I did in terms of this second Wi-Fi router settings. And what you want to do now is turn off this router and now you want to connect the deeper network device in between your all-in-one modem and this new Wi-Fi router. Just make sure in 
between your Wi-Fi router and your all-in-one modem, there is deeper network device that's connected with Ethernet cable. Two things I want to mention here, really important. Number one is that deeper mini device. It doesn't matter the port direction. So there's no in and out order. So you can basically connect with uh, any of the ports. Second, really, really important thing is we're not going to touch the WAN port on the new router, which is WAN here. You can see it's a blue port. We're not going to touch it. We're only going to touch the LAN port, which is these orange ports. So I used LAN 1. Quick setup recap. What's happening here is my all-in-one modem. I'm only using LAN 1 with the Ethernet cable coming out of my all-in-one, going into one of the ports on Deeper Mini. And then the other port comes out is going into this LAN 1 on my new Wi-Fi router. Really, really important part. Otherwise, it won't work. When you connect the deeper device, turn on the new router. And now you want to enable your Wi-Fi on your network and you should be able to see this new network option. That's TP-Link. This is the new router that we set, right? You click on it. You want to enter the password you set to. You can see here I connected to the second router, which is the deeper network. The way we can tell is come to a new browser and type in 34.34.34.34 or 11.22.33. 3344 and then you click on enter and this is going to prompt you to this dashboard you want to enter your username and password here the first time is admin and admin if you haven't watched my video on unboxing and setup make sure you do because i cover all this in detail and you click on login and you should be able to log into your dashboard just like this A quick recap and summary of what we did, okay? First of all, we went to all-in-one modem. We did a few tweaks there in terms of grabbing their IP address and tweak around with the channel. Again, this is a minimized tweak that we did on all-in-one. Second thing what we did is we grabbed a new router, either purchased or used one, and we did a reset. I changed the mode from router mode to access point mode. At the LAN IP, I modified it slightly different. So it's a different IP pool and IP address than the first all-in-one modem. And really important part, disable DHCP. And from there, I basically modified the channel for 2.4 and 5 Hertz and turn this router off, connect the deeper mini in my case, turn on this router, and now I'm able to log in to this new Wi-Fi router. So moving on forward, if you want to go back to your previous internet, come to Wi-Fi and select the previous internet network option. If you want to enjoy the deeper network feature, you simply switch the Wi-Fi to the new router that you got. And now you get to enjoy the deeper network DPN features. A little quick tip here is that if I come to network preferences, you're going to see one option says automatically join this network. That means every time when I restart my computer, if I want to automatically jump on deeper network, I can give it a check. This will automatically join. If I don't, it will automatically connect it to my first all-in-one, which is my original Wi-Fi. Every time if I want to switch to deeper network, I just have to manually click on that Wi-Fi name. That's a quick little tip for you. Uh, maybe go get a TP-Link router. It works really well and all their dashboard is about the same. I linked a few in the description. Maybe you can check them out. If you're interested in, grab it from Amazon and get it delivered and give it a try. So you can really rewatch this video and do exactly the same settings that I did, okay? And do me a favor, guys. If this video helped you out in any shape or form, drop some comments in below and give it a like on this video so algorithm can show it to more and more people who are frustrated with their setup and couldn't get everything to work. Also, I recommend you guys to join Deeper Network Discord group. The link is in the description. Definitely go check out the description of this video. There's lots of useful links and hopefully you can get everything set up and up running with no time. And this is Tariel Sultan signing out. Thank you for watching my channel and I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>